guys, it's Julia, and today I'm going to be doing a review over Carve the Mark by Veronica Roth. I am trying to get used to doing a more consistent recording and not doing a bunch of breaks in my recordings because I did get a new microphone and I have to record in two different programs, so it's just easier if I can, like, continually record instead of pausing on here and pausing on there and then putting everything together it's really difficult so I'm gonna be trying to get used to just doing a consistent recording and not stopping so we'll see how that goes I might do a lot of like pauses hopefully not but we'll see <laughs> anyway so let's just go ahead and get started so the story revolves around Syra, who is a high is high up in the she's like part of the ruling family of her society that she lives in and she has what is called a current gift and a lot of people do have what is called a current gift which is a gift that you get from the current of space and her current gift is one that is kind of debilitating and she it's debilitating to her and to other people so when she touches people she can cause them pain and she can cause them so much pain that they actually die and, but also this gift causes her pain just as much as she's giving off she's receiving so um, her brother actually kidnaps Akos and Aja and their brothers and Akos has the power to stop current gifts, so he can touch somebody and stop their gift. And Aija is an oracle, so Razak, which is Cyrus' brother, wants um, Aija in order to help him stop his fate, which there are only certain people who have certain fates that are bound to happen. And so he's trying to change his, even though they say that you cannot change your fate. So then he has Akos kind of for his sister so that he can stop her current gift and help her with her pain. But at the same time, Razak is trying to use Syra to gain political power and he uses her in the way of scaring people into doing what he wants. Well then, Syra and Akos fall in love and they and she begins to resent her brother because all he wants to do is use her for her power and that's it. He calls her stupid. He doesn't really like her. So um, she decides that she's going to kind of help Akos overthrow Razak and save Akos' brother, Aisha. So I really enjoyed the writing of this book. I am someone who really likes Veronica Roth. I loved the whole Divergent series, and I feel like if you liked the Divergent series, you will really enjoy this book. This book is part of a duology. She, there's going to be a second one coming out, and I feel like this book ended in a way that was like not such a cliffhanger that you're annoyed, but it was a good place to stop and pick back up in another book. So I'm really excited about that. I feel like um, she did a really good job with her world building. Um, it was very detailed and I could really picture every element of the world. And the characters were really greatly written. I knew, I felt like I knew Syra and Akos. So I really enjoyed the characters of the story. Like I said, I thought they were very well written. and. Cyrus' character is very, like, she knows how to fight, but she's very, like, closed off from the world, and she doesn't have a lot of friends because she does inflict pain on people every time she touches them, so nobody is, everybody's so scared of her that they don't want to be friends with her. So whenever Akos comes into her life, it's kind of like this refreshing thing for her because he can stop her gift and it doesn't hurt him to, for her to touch him. So their romance is really cool because it's not just your typical like romance in a young teen book. It's very like she needed him and he needed her to kind of balance out their personalities. So I just I really liked that aspect of the story. So overall I gave this book a 4.5 stars which on Goodreads I rounded up to a 5 stars because obviously you can't do a 4.5 and I felt like it, it deserved more of a 5 star rating than a 4 star rating so um, 
I did find, I do have a couple cons that I want to talk about and one of those things would be that the names in this book were very hard to pronounce and some of the names were very similar to other names and because they were different and not your typical names, sometimes I would get certain characters confused with other characters. So that was kind of an annoying aspect of the story. I probably would have I probably would have picked some people to have really different names and then some other ones to have easier names or just used more typical names for the story because there's so much already that you're having to build in your mind as far as the world goes and the characters goes. It's very like as a very complex world. So it just would be easier to have easier names because your mind's already working so hard. So, but other than that, I really loved this story. It really ca caught my attention and I read it really fast. So, um, and I do want to point out that this cover is just so pretty. I love this cover and the um, naked book is really pretty too. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like imprinted. And I really love that. So. So I did want to talk a little bit about the uh, racism aspect that people are saying are, is in this book. I read the blog post that everybody's talking about and has kind of gone viral, so to speak, in the booktube world when it comes to this book. And the blog post said that the reason why they find it racist is because Cyrus people are portrayed to be very brutal because whenever they kill people, they carve marks in their arm to mark that they killed people and to honor them. So the blog post says that the reason why it is racist is because Syra is a person of color and her people are brutal. So having those aspects together makes it racist. I don't feel like the book was racist because I feel like if just because her people, her group of people is brutal and they're also of color, which actually I think I'm not really for sure, but I think that not all of her people are of color. She is just of color. And never once says that the entire group as a whole are colored. So my camera died, so I have to finish recording this video on my computer because I'm not gonna go charge my camera and then come back because I got a couple things that I gotta do today. So anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, I feel like the person who wrote that blog was over-exaggerating because reading the book, I just don't feel like there's really a racist aspect in it. I think that the author was trying to be diverse because diversity is a big thing right now. And whenever she did that, people decided to call her racist because she didn't do it the way that they would have liked. I feel like if the main character was white and her race was very, or her people were very brutal, it wouldn't have been racist to white people, so why is it racist to black people? I don't know. I know that this is very controversial and I don't want to hurt people's feelings or offend anybody, but I just don't see it. Now, if there are different aspects that were brought up that were racist that I just didn't see, I would love to hear that from people. I'd like to know why people feel this way, because ultimately, I don't want to support an author who is racist, but I just didn't see it and I do love Veronica Ross so I'm going to continue to read her books because I think she's very talented and I don't think she's racist. So I feel like if she was racist she wouldn't have had a character that was black. That is it for my video, my review on Carve the Mark. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And like I said, I would love to hear your comments on what you thought of the book and if you thought there were any racist aspects to the story. And yeah, so I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.